Last night I got back from a Craigslist haul. Again, that same person. We'll say that this is a this is a um, project that's going to be, you know, one of those crazy was it worth the effort type of things because this particular guy liked to build stuff and he built a few things one of which is this he took this uh dewalt um radio arm saw and he converted it into what basically looks like a multi-router um if you know what that is he put a router on the side with a custom uh, mounting bracket and he, he did a lot of metal working and you can see the contraption there for the rails and styles or whatever you're going to mount to it to route um, so this was all mounted to a router table and then he had a sharpening station which is this thing in which he had that sharpening center from delta and although some people say they don't love them some people do like them and for um you know what I was thinking was that I could use this for uh, things that I don't necessarily um, want to have the most precise, you know, edges on, like uh, maybe tools for the garden. But anyways, I got this stuff for so cheap. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, so um, this is kind of going to be a uh, a work in progress for a while. Another thing the guy did was he liked to make. Uh, planes and this is a body for one you can see the pins already in it but he didn't um, finish it although there's parts to it uh, that i can probably finish it um, and then just going through and looking through all of his old stuff i mean there's so much dust on all this stuff drill doctor which is pretty cool because i don't have one of those and i kind of wanted to try one at some point but that thing was uh basically free um, and then we've got a completely homemade sanding center. Look at this thing. It, so basically this guy's got a, a belt here and a disc here runs on a little motor and this is just all hundred percent homemade. Um, I, I, neat, there's tons of stuff. And another thing is this router table. This has got the, um, joint tech, uh, system on it and this was really uh, fascinating to me although the table is a mess you know the actual table it looks like it would be nice but in the reality of it is it's probably uh you know it's it's mortise and tenon joinery but it's not uh, very strong as far as the weight of it but it's uh it's very massive and i don't know if i'm gonna have room in the shop for it We'll see what happens, uh, but behind the door there, there's a surprise router. There's a multi-purpose table has a router in it. And I did come across uh, via the internet some things about this. Um, I was familiar with the name uh, Joint Tech, but I didn't know exactly, you know, I, I didn't have anything. I just knew it was good stuff, uh, but I wasn't really familiar with the whole story. Um, behind Joint Tech. Well, uh, Joint Tech makes this router uh, lift and also the fence. Um, and it's a very precise, you know, precision uh, instrument, everything. So the router lift, um, because I had known of Joint Tech, you know, this is way back in the early 2000s or late 90s, I believe it started coming out. But, um, you know, I didn't really think about getting a lift because I didn't really want to spend the money and I felt it was just capable I was capable enough to do my routers without having a lift mounted just at the table and that's today that's the way I, I still do it so uh, having the lift is kind of a foreign thing for me but I will say this is really cool um, the lift itself is I mean talk about this being you know around 20 years old and it operates just as smooth as it does when they're new i mean it the meth the mechanism is completely perfect so i'm missing some parts though i don't have the crank and um this although it does come with a he they did have a couple of these uh, inserts which are great 
um, you need these. But um, if you want multiple ones, you know, right? You, you got to find them online, maybe on eBay or something. But, you know, I thought, well, it's not going to be a problem. I, you know, I, it won't be an issue at all for me. I'll figure it out. Well, sure enough, um, I was doing some research on Joint Tech, and I realized that Joint Tech was made by Jessam. Jessam, of course, makes my router fence, my um, guides to feed the stock through, um, several other things. Now, I don't have a, a uh, Jessam lift. As I told you, I don't have any lifts. So um, I wasn't familiar with their lifts. But apparently their lifts, they make this. They made this. So all the stuff that this is, is still today. It's still current. So that just goes to show you how well this was made. So this is exactly the same as the, the new one that's out there. So, you know, what's cool is that these fit. The, the new ones will fit on this table a lift. So I can get brand new ones of these if I want to in multiple different sizes and they're still going to fit. This basically goes down and it locks in and apparently they fit. Um, and I just spoke with the, um, the rep from Jessam and said, yes, they do. She sent me a, um, very helpful by the way, um, she sent me the um, booklet on this, although it's, it says Jessam on it, she says it's the exact same thing. So again, just that validates my point. Jessam built these. Um, and she said they were built like tanks. So um, that's a good sign. She asked how everything worked on it. And I said, so far, it seems to work great. And she said, all right, that's good. She said, you may need to adjust some things over time, but it sounds like it's working fine. So no need to adjust. But uh, this is the kicker. I mean, I got all this stuff. I mean, this whole entire set of stuff, I paid $400 for. I mean... I don't even, you, it's so hard for me to really grasp this. Um, I mean, it's not just the, it's not just the router table and, and the fence and all stuff. It's everything. Um, and check this out. So when I was there, um, I noticed that there was a router buried. It was covered, right? It was entirely covered. And check this out. Look what's inside here. Now, I didn't realize that this particular router, um, would, it was designed to work with the Porter Cable 7518 router. And sure enough, there's a Porter Cable 7518 uh, router in here. And now you, not, you, you all know I like the Milwaukee better than the Porter Cable routers, but um, getting past that, this is considered a very good router. And it was designed to work with this um, lift exclusively. So they built it around this. So it obviously is made to fit. Um, and since I have several of these routers sitting around, that's great. Um, but this router, I mean, it's in here. So this is $350 router that's sitting in here, five speed router, and it's ready to go. And I spent three or 400 bucks on everything that I bought. Um, so I'm just like, I don't even know how to say like this, this is crazy. Um, so I've got, uh, I've got some work cut out for me because this is some seriously messy stuff. Um, the guy, I don't know, he didn't really clean much, but there's, de there's nastiness everywhere. So I got to go around and clean everything. Um, this switch seems to be like a nice, you know, good switch here. However, it looks to me, um, pretty dated and um, for as cheap as new switches are, I think I'll probably end up switching this out. This whole table is, is built like a tank, but because he used solid, this is solid poplar to build this, this top moves quite a bit. So it has um, definitely moved a bit and it's all mortise and tenon joinery. So um, the, the joints though, it's like he built it to take it apart because none of them are glued. Um, so I don't think he applied any glue on the tenons. I think he just left it kind of floating so he could take it apart if he needed to. But, um, and this area here, this plenum for the dust extraction has a four inch port, which is cool. Um, but it doesn't look like the guy ever had a vacuum hooked up to it. And I don't even think he used it much. The router, I mean, it, this doesn't even look like it has a lot of wear on it. Um, certainly the fence too. 
it doesn't actually look like it's got a lot of wear. Um, and that's the nice fence with the vacuum hookup. Um, I'm, I'm just out of my mind right now. I don't even know like what to say on this stuff. Uh, but I will say that um, the amount of money I spent on this uh, is uh, it's just crazy. Uh, so this is one of those things. This is a pretty clever situation here. He's got the way he did this. Um, and this guy was an inventor, so he did a lot of cool stuff. But uh, I don't know as though he worked with wood a ton a ton, but he did do a lot with wood, but mostly aluminum. Um, but he had a lot of woodworking tools as well. So um, evidently he had some nice stuff. But I'll have to do some um, work on this to get it going. But I wanted to show you because uh, I'm opening this up for the first time and um, checking this out. But I wanted to double check with the company just to make sure that everything was the, you know, everything was on the up and up because I didn't want to make a mess. But I mean, look at all this. Uh, so this hasn't been cleaned. I haven't touched this since I brought it back to the shop. And even with the um, traveling and everything, uh, this stuff is still is stuck on here. I mean, it just so I brought the I brought the um, toothbrush. I'm going to get in here and clean up a lot of the stuff, clean up the router. It's got a half inch collet in there. Um, I actually grabbed two wrenches. I thought they were for this, but they end up being for the other thing I got, um, which I'll show you later. It's, uh... Okay, just did some light cleaning on this guy. And uh, um, he, here's what, if anybody ever wanted to know why you shouldn't build these type of router tables out of solid wood, here's an example. Look at that split. That is crazy. So I don't know, maybe he didn't even uh, make this with a tight joint there, but I'm sure he did at some point in time. But because this is solid wood and because there's a lot of things happening with this wood, um, it probably split right on that joint um, as things started to change in size, humidity, and dryness. But anyways, um, so that's going to have to be dealt with. Uh, I wouldn't typically have a router station in a solid wood top, especially when it's this thick. Um, so it's, it's uh, too... Two and a half inches thick or something. It's very thick. Um, but cool, check this out. This Doesn't this look pretty much... I mean, uh, it, it just looks really good. So this is it right here. Right there. Model RLP1. Router Lift Pro. This is the analog version, right? They, we all know they had an um, electronic version. But... Uh, this thing is pretty crazy. So the only thing that I haven't actually done is I haven't actually turned the router on. So I, honestly, I don't even know if it works. Uh, let's assume that it does, but I don't want to assume this works. I've actually had one of these, uh, the plunge router, the variable speed fail on me. So I'm not going to assume that, that works, uh, but for sure, I definitely want to check the router out and see if it works. These routers are heavy, definitely heavy. They are very, very impressive machines, these routers. But I don't, um, I don't use them, but I think they're impressive machines. All right, I mean, it's, it's off. Let's see how this does. And this is, the collet is locked in, so I can turn it on. 
should be able to turn it on without it going crazy, yeah. Thing just hums. That's on 10,000 RPM. Let me, let me change the speed. It, it sounds absolutely perfect. The bearings sound perfect. I don't think this thing's had a lot of use. The um, thing looks like it's in very good shape. So, again, um, I'm just impressed with the overall quality. First of all, of the, the router lift being that it's over about 20 years old, something like that. We'll say 20. And um, everything just looks really good on it. So, everything. The belt seems to be like it's in, and uh, this is the same belt they use on the um, current one, so there's nothing different about it. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, impressed. So this is how you level it. You raise these up, and you can actually, uh, the bar comes up here. So different from some of the today's models where they have the screw on top, this particular brand, they like to go underneath and then adjust them. And these are the snuggers. So you can loosen these up and you can pull it tight to your opening to um, lock the lift into the opening to s prevent side to side or back and forth movement. So that's how you do that with these. Just unscrew those. This guy um, is secured via the uh, bolts right here. And I guess this, because this is designed for this, it fits in there like a glove perfectly. You can get spacers to fit other routers, but you can't get a spacer for the, the 5625 uh, Milwaukee router, which is the one I like. But, you know, so this is the way I like to mount my routers, right? Just straight up. It's so easy. It's cheap. It's perfect. I mean, you can't put in huge panel razors on there, but you know what? That's okay. Um, so this... Lift is definitely going to be a new thing for me, but this is um, my everyday router table. And you can see it's got the, I, I made it so I can put inserts in here. But uh, again, this is just mounted right to the, you know, you can see right here, it's mounted right to the countertop. And um, one thing you have to do when you, when you mount to the counter is you have to take away some of the material. So it's, you know, so you could possibly lose some of the depth, in other words, um, because the, the router lifts are pretty thin. You can see that depth right there um, is, uh, you know, whatever depth that is. What it, What's nice also about this um, is that you can actually change the bits from up above if, you, if that's something that you really like to do. So I just don't, you know, like the idea of spinning, cranking it, you know, up. One revolution is a sixteenth of an inch up, so you gotta crank this thing like forever in a day in order to get that thing to go up. You know, whatever it is, three inches or so, and then you have to do that again to go down. And they don't like you using um, power drills for this, but I imagine a lot of people do. Uh, it says it voids your warranty. I guess they can they can tell if it's been used with the power drill, um, but which is, I guess it's. It's interesting, but I guess it's good that they don't want you using the power drill because um, they don't want you prematurely wearing it out. But it would be nice if they, they could design these to be used with a power drill rather than to not be because those hand cranks, um, that, you know, that's a lot of wear and tear in your shoulders and it takes a lot of time and your energy to do that. Um, I think it would be nice if you could use a power drill without being told not to. Um, but yeah, th this is a sweet uh, setup. I love the color too, that green with the uh, that gold. Um, that's a really cool color. Uh, what color would that be in sports? That would be football. Would that be the Packers? 
it seems like the Packers. Um, but uh, anyways, it definitely is a cool color. I love that. So, all right. So this is the first time I've opened this up and, um, you know, checked it out. I'm pretty impressed. I think it's funny that the guy had um, all these four-inch ports. And this one's clogged. Uh, and by the way, if you want to want to get rid of those clogs, what you can do is take a... Uh, I have a little piece of wire that I... Um, stick in here and it's just a, a little piece of wire that I bend and it goes in the little um, cracks and crevices of those and do it while you're vacuuming it because what what happens to see how it builds up as you slide this shut it builds up and eventually you can never shut it see that so this thing has got that uh, all that dust and you know crud built up in there so this thing will never shut so the other option is to take this out completely and uh, which i've done in the past and um, there's a little stopper in there to keep it from coming out but i've actually opened this up um, you, you just break this seal right here and you can take this whole thing apart and you can clip uh, cut it um, the corners so that when you slide it there's actually uh, an angled part to this um, closing part there's an angled part, and when you get to the shut position, that angled part um, bypasses the dust, and you don't have to worry. You still have to clean it out a little bit, but it helps a lot.